folks, um, we're going to begin looking at the uh, the Gospel of John uh, this week in Bible study, uh, starting a series that we'll be looking at uh, for most of this year. Um, it's over 30 weeks. We're going to do the first nine weeks uh, before Easter, and then we'll keep going throughout the year. Um, I'm really excited about it, uh, and so I just want to provide this brief uh intro there's lots of information in the um pack that i sent out uh that has an outline i just want to provide a bit of a, a spin on that uh to get you thinking about the excitement of this so thinking about the gospel of john but one of the things i've noticed recently is that uh, there's a great sin in our in our society of what biased journalism uh it's one of the worst things that a journalist can do apparently it's um you can't uh you can't just talk for one side from one side especially uh if you're on the other side so this is a uh uh a thing i saw in a paper this week um where you know well you can see what's going on people were upset uh, the right was upset about grace tame showing disrespect for the office of the prime minister uh, and that same newspaper that was so upset, um, you know, went to great efforts to show disrespect to um, the last two Labor prime ministers, probably really showing disrespect to the office. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether you're on the left or the right. Um, I guess the thing is to recognise that um, a biased journalism is a crime. The reason I raised that when I was talking about John is that um, John is not a journalist. But John is an eyewitness. Uh, he's providing an eyewitness report uh, of what about Jesus, uh, and and but it's not a it's not an unbiased view. In fact, it's a completely biased view because John is absolutely convinced of who Jesus is. He's absolutely convinced uh, of what Jesus can do and of what Jesus is doing. Um, John writes one of the four gospels. Uh, found in the New Testament. Um, but John is a bit different. So John is an eyewitness. He's one of the first apostles that Jesus um, asks to come with him. He's one of the fishermen that Jesus says, come and be a fisher of men. Um, his brother James comes with him. Uh, they're the two sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, as they're described. Um, but rather than following a timeline like the other three Gospels do, John is much more of a thematic study, looking at the themes of who, particularly looking at the identity of Jesus and who he is and where he fits into things. Um, and John writes with a goal in mind. And he tells us what the goal is in John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, John says, this is the goal of what, why he's writing. He says, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in, in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by, by believing you may have life, you may have life in his name. So John writes with a goal, a clear goal. His clear goal is that people would know Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing that he is the Christ, the promised Messiah, the promised Saviour, the Son of God, that his readers might have life in Jesus' name. So it's worth acknowledging that John wrote this biography as a fan of Jesus, that it's a biased view, that he has a clear goal in mind. We're not reading it to get um, measured independent journalism. We're reading it because well, we believe that John is inspired by God. We believe that John is writing down what he has seen because he is an expert. And we believe that the book of John has gotten to us because so many people over history, over the past 2,000 years, have been passionate about others knowing this truth. And so it's been handed down. John writes with a goal in mind. He also writes... Uh, with an audience in mind. Uh, he writes with the, the goal of writing to the Jewish people, Israelites who are living under Roman rule, and to some extent the 
uh, impact of Christianity by the time John writes it means that the Roman rule is even more difficult for Christians because while they were to some extent upset, but probably a bit nonplussed by Jesus, by the by 50 or 60 or 40, 30 or 40 years later, about 70 AD, about 40 years after Jesus' death, um, Christians are annoying. And so uh, he writes to a people who are oppressed and are in danger, danger of their lives, financially insecure because of the Roman rule. But he also writes to a people who are dealing with uh, a modern world that is platonic, which means that people don't think it's okay for the physical and the spiritual to mix. So they don't think that God could come into the world and remain God. There's more in the, uh, the outline, the intro that, uh, from the CBSI papers, uh, and they're well worth reading and having a go to. But these are the contexts in which John writes to his readers that they would believe and have life in Jesus' name. Now, if you're wondering why are we going back to the gospel, we've done the gospel before, I've read the gospel before. Well, the significant thing to recognise is that, um, well, in Jesus, John's goal is that we would have life in his name. Now, that's not just about being saved. That's about how we're going to live in Jesus' name. How we're going to live with Jesus as the Christ, Jesus as the Son of God, Jesus as our Saviour, Jesus as our King, Jesus as our Lord. How will we live as a person who knows God? And we will get to know how to live as a person who is in relationship with God through knowing Jesus better through listening to the inspired words of John, the eyewitness, who was watching and listening and learning and growing and changing. And 40 years later, he writes it down before he dies to reflect on the life that changed his life and the life that changed the world and the life that continues to change the world uh, 2,000 years later. I look forward to studying John with you. I think it'll be great fun. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, teach us what we need to learn about you and about Jesus that we might glorify you as we study John. Amen. Friends, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday.